I think that was great, um, great improvement, right? You know that PBFT protocols, they are not so practical. Your title is also a bit formulated carefully, like almost practical. So we know that they don't scale well, well in, uh, with respect to number of participants. So like, if you just have very rough estimation, what do you think, what is your improvement in terms of nodes? Like how, how many nodes would, uh, would be practical for previous systems and what is the improvement with your protocol? Yeah, that's a pretty uh, insightful question. So even though we right now tested up to 150 nodes, and but you can see once the, the number of the nodes go up to uh, go more than to 100, the system performance is dramatically degraded. And there are, uh, I think there are a couple of reasons for this unpleasant tendency. And one is we don't, uh, because asynchronous protocols have to use a lot of threshold crypto systems. And the threshold crypto systems may have some very, for example, like uh, N-square computational co cost. And, and that will become the major factor if the system scale goes up. That's the first reason. And the second reason is that, uh, and is that, uh, you know, and we have n square message in the systems. That means that that means still each parties has to send a message to all parties that join in the system. And so, so, so that means if we have more nodes in a system and everyone has to send more messages. And these two bottlenecks can be the major reasons causing the scalability issue. And, uh, and to solve these two issues, and the first is um, then we should have better crypto, uh, threshold crypto systems. And, uh, and maybe we can use, if we are trying to implement uh, the system in practice, we may use some like uh, ASAC to accelerate the computation. Like uh, we use more, uh, just to use more um, ASAC machines to compute the crypto uh, computations. And the second is like uh, currently, actually the systems and the protocols all consider very strong adversary models, something we call the adaptive adversary. So that means uh, at least we have to send N messages to each party has to send N messages. And maybe we can slightly, slightly uh, relax the adversary model uh, to only allow some kind of a static adversary, maybe we can go through the, the, the inherent uh, uh, the bond of to have to send the message complexities. So that I think both aspects can can be, yeah, can be useful to answer your question and plot our future works. Thank you. That's my answer. Not sure it's. A no, thanks. Fully that answered. was a comprehensive. Thanks. I think you know. Uh, we discussed about assumptions, for example, one of the previous speakers said like, okay, you know, each assumption somehow translates to amount of exploits and vulnerabilities, so we should be yeah. careful here what is reasonable, what is not, but I agree, of course, that, um, yeah, we should somehow try to make things practical and maybe it's the right way to start trying to find, you know, trade-offs and maybe things improve in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much.